So for the 2020 Ohio No-Till Field Day, one of the projects they wanted to look at were, were corn and soybeans, but I wouldn't have figured maybe in the same field, but here we go. So joining me is Josh Oder. So Josh, we're in 60 inch corn and 60 inch beans. Tell us kind of what you're, what you're looking at here. Well, our, our main goal for this plot is really, I mean, as you can imagine, just experimental to see, you know, how can we change genetic expression for both corn and soybeans when you put them in such a radically different environment than what we typically have in our uh, normal cropping system. A couple years ago, I saw a, a presentation by Fred Bilo that talked about um, how much smaller a root system a corn plant has when you go from 30 inch row corn to 20 inch row corn. Well, my question was, well, what happens if you go the exact opposite direction? Can you get a corn plant to flex in, in, in that direction when you give it so much more opportunity for sunlight by developing a solar corridor? So, so you, you planted the corn and then you mm -hmm. come back to plant the beans same time or what, what's the timing on the planting? Yeah, so uh, through our seed company, we've, we have a four row plot planter. And what we did was we just uh, put corn in one box, bean in another, planted both of them uh, at the same time. We planted the soybeans at, um, on a 30 inch row equivalent would be 90,000 seeds per acre. Um, and then we varied the corn population uh, at a lower seeding rate, uh, which would be similar to like 32,000 seeds per acre on 30 inch rows, um, and really high population like 40,000 seeds per acre to see, you know, where would be the sweet spot um, in terms of flex and, and, uh, and genetic expression. Now, we're obviously looking at some pretty short corn, but you think that's more stress from, from the weather and not necessarily from the system? Well, I think it's a combination of uh, a couple different factors. This particular field uh, has been through a lot of stress. Uh, about two days after we planted it, um, we got about three and a half inches of rain on it. Um, but luckily it, it merged perfectly well, but it's been through uh, quite a bit of uh, um, drought stress. We're about 75% uh, of what our 10-year uh, um, average is. Um, but I also think that um, because uh, it's such wide rows, it doesn't have to um, compete quite as much for for sunlight and, and grow quite as tall. So your your goal is to to shell the corn and then come back and harvest the beans, correct? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a couple different things. We're gonna do some hand checks just in case because uh, we don't know whether we're gonna be able to feasibly uh, harvest the beans afterwards. But we're going to uh, do some hand checks just to see, hey, what did uh, what did we get out of this? Um, you know, as a potential yield out of it, um, and then go through and for sure harvest the corn. And, and if it looks good enough to harvest the beans, we'll put the grain table back on and we'll, we'll harvest the beans. So did you cut your nitrogen, hoping the, the, the soybean nodulation would, would feed the corn plant or, or what would you do fertility wise? So uh, fertility wise, we, uh, um, we kept everything just like we would um, a normal, uh, 30 year in inch row uh, corn crop. Um, I'm actually surprised that the uh, soybeans have nodulated because they actually ended up uh, getting some of that side dress nitrogen as well. Um, but if you dig these plants up, we, we checked for nodulation a couple weeks ago and they're nodulating perfectly well, which was kind of surprising. Um, the root systems, if you will, uh, are, uh, it's amazing the, the horizontal uh, growth that we've seen. We've dug up a couple plants um, and uh, they're both growing towards the soybeans as well as within, within the row that are, you're getting a lot more horizontal growth. So have you, have you done any hand yield checks on the corn yet? Uh, we, did, we did a couple of them uh, a little further down the, down the way just to see you know, what would need to happen to make something like this economically feasible. Um, and on a good year, it, it looks pretty good. I mean, just from a, um, I mean, there's some, there's some, there's some 200 bushel corn uh, behind us. So I know, um, talking with Nathan Brown earlier, who um, runs some cattle, he's got a similar test on his farm that, um, but not, not beans in between 60 inch corn. He's going to graze cattle afterwards. So, so what you're saying is, this could be very viable for someone that wants to graze some cattle. That you're not going to be giving up really any yield possibly. Yeah, yeah, the. the What's really interesting about 60 inch row corn is 
uh, the possibilities that it, it allows you, whether you're talking about grazing in between, whether it talks about establishing cover crops a little bit earlier that sometimes we struggle to a little bit later. There's a lot, it, it opens up a lot of different management tools um, that we wouldn't necessarily have in our current pro cropping system. What's your assessment of it today? Will you, will you try more of it? Um, kind of what's, what's your next step from here? I think over the next couple of years, you're going to see us uh, experiment uh, with a, uh, a plot like this. Um, we're going to experiment with uh, different planting rates, different hybrids, um, probably different configurations. Does, does uh, um, 60 inch row corn with beans every other one make sense or does it make sense to do something similar to what Ohio State's doing where you have, you know, eight rows of corn, eight rows of beans that uh, would be a little bit easier to harvest. Um, so we're going to do some different configurations because if you look at the uh, the economic potential to it um, and also the flexibility that it gives you from a management perspective, if you could make it work, it's uh, it's interesting enough to to play with. <laughs> well, indeed, an interesting story here in Plain City with uh, with Josh Yoder, 60 inch corn, 60 inch beans. Be interesting to follow this up. Um, OhioNoTillCouncil.com. Uh, I'm sure we'll have the yield data once this, uh, once this gets uh, taken off, so uh, be sure to follow back up uh, at OhioNoTillCouncil.com. For the Ohio Agnet, I'm Bart Johnson.